This is Atiba Buchanan. And this is David Seaton, and we are the hosts of the Buchanan and Seaton Show. Join us Sundays at 5 p.m. where we will discuss current events, local, national, and international politics with expert commentary coupled with our unique perspective. Again, that's the Buchanan and Seaton Show where we are unapologetically progressive. The Buchanan and Seaton Show where we find the humanity in the headlines. Listen to us on WVON.com, iHeartRadio, and WVON 1690, the talk of Chicago. Mr. Buchanan, what's going on, sir? Hey, good evening, sir. All right. I got the right name in the corner. <laughs> so welcome to the first, what, the Buchanan and Seton? Midweek. Midweek vlog? Yep, midweek vlog. All right, that's what we're calling it. All right. All right. Absolutely. So thanks for anyone that's watching this. We thank you so much for your time. Uh, what we'd like to do is just, you know, inject you all with a, with a little bit of information, uh, a little bit of opinion, a little bit of fact uh, during the course of the week uh, in between shows. And uh, it's not going to, you know, we're not going to overwhelm you. This is just a few minutes long just to, you know, just try, just to get the conversation going. Anything you want to add to that, Dave? No, I think that's perfect. We just want to make yeah. sure we're engaging with as many people as possible since we only, you know, our show only, show only broadcasts once a week. So. In addition to that, we, we never get a chance to really do video with the, with the radio show on WVON. Uh, so this is an opportunity for us to, to, you know, engage in a different type of way. So first things first, you do want to listen to the Buchanan and Seton show Friday nights at 9 p.m. from 9 p.m. until midnight on WVON, AM 1690, the talk of Chicago. You can also listen to that on iHeartRadio and WVON.com. Uh, you also want to be aware of our Twitter page, the Buchanan and Seton show. Uh, you also want to follow uh, David Seaton's uh, blog called Seaton Speaks, and you and he's uh, releasing information what three times a week now? Two to three times a week. I think I have to scale back a little bit. That three yeah. times a week was getting a little overwhelming. Just one person, but yeah, Seaton yeah, right, right. dot com. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. See, Seaton Speaks dot com. He, he has some very, very intriguing material there that uh, you will not be disappointed with. So. Let's go ahead. We're not going to waste the good people's time, Dave. Let's, let's hop right into it. I know this is something that's uh, been pressing, uh, something that's been a, a great, not a great concern, but you know, so, certainly something that, that, that you've been thinking about quite a bit uh, with Joe Biden now being the presumptive uh, Democratic nominee, uh, is, and that's his VP pick. And uh, there are people speculating that Stacey Abrams should be that pick, Stacey Abrams being amongst those people. Well, Stacey Abrams is actively campaigning to be the VP candidate. She's calling, I mean, it's being reported, reported everywhere. She's going all over the place and going to Democratic stakeholders and telling them she should be the vice presidential candidate. And, and that, that's in poor taste. That really rubs me the wrong way. I, I mean, my opinions, of, my opinions about her, her aside, but you know, to actively campaign strategically for people within the Democratic Party in hopes that they'll go back and persuade Joe Biden or try to strong arm Joe Biden into picking her. I think that's, that's, a, that's a really bad move on her part. Yeah, I, um, I was kind of disappointed to hear that. And, and it's kind of, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to use the word because it gets overused too much. I, I don't want to say that it's unprecedented. I'm sure maybe someone has done it before but it's just not something that you see very often. Uh, I certainly do not even recall Joe Biden campaigning to be Barack Obama's vice president. Um, I don't even know, I'm, I'm certain Sarah, pa Sarah Palin was not campaigning uh, to be John McCain's pick. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, that's just in recent well, politics. Palin was too busy staying in Alaska from our house. Right. <laughs> and, aside, and, and again, even whatever opinions you have about Stacey Abrams, she was a state representative in the state of Georgia. She, she did that for 10 years. She had a failed campaign for governor. Whatever your opinions are about how she didn't win or, or whatever happened, she had a failed, you know, she had a failed run for governor in a state that's, you know, in the bottom half, probably in the bottom third, as far as states ranked in the United States. You don't go from state rep to failed governor, gubernatorial candidate, to vice presidential candidate, and 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 for those of uh, for those who might even be thinking, well, Barack Obama was a state senator in Illinois. Between him being a state senator in Illinois 
and running for president, he knew he had to have some exposure on the federal level. So he ran for state senator in Illinois, won that, and then went on to run for president. But he, no, you skipped a step. He became a, a senator for Illinois. So he was a state rep, right? Right. He was a state senator. Then he became the, fed, the senator for the state of Illinois, and then he ran. Right. Exactly. So he, he had two successful campaigns that he had won, one on the state level, another on the federal level. Correct. So he was, you know, uh, people always referred to him as the ju junior senator from Illinois. Correct. Because he had just he had just gotten to the Senate when he had, when he had ran for president. Correct. So, you know, with that said, you're not the only person that was offended by this. I, I did a little research and it looks like um, Democratic Rep. William Lacey Clay out of Missouri. Uh, he criticized her, saying that this is his quote. I'll tell you what is somewhat offensive to me is when you are marketing yourself as a VP candidate, end quote. He also went on to say, you know, at the racetrack, you cannot show up at the winner's window with loser's tickets. Right. You haven't right. won anything. You can't show up at the, win at the winner's window with loser's tickets and demand anything, he said. So again, um, I, my, my, my problem with it is that, speaking more broadly, uh, you know I, I am not the biggest fan of Joe Biden. I, 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 again, I, I will make it clear that I will be voting for him. Uh, no problem come November. So he has my vote. With that said, though, I do believe that Joe Biden has an enthusiasm gap. Excuse me. And I don't know that his VP pick is going to help him bridge that. I think his VP pick is critically important, more so than a regular candidate. Uh, again, for Barack Obama, his VP pick was, was, was nowhere near as important uh, because, you know, the, the enthusiasm was about him. Um, right now, Joe Biden, in my opinion, is running a wave of anti-Trumpism more so than he, is, than, than he is people, you know, that are for Joe Biden. With that said, I'd like for him to pick someone that can help bring more enthusiasm. I don't see how Stacey Abrams is that person. It's, I don't, it's not that I have anything against her personally. I just don't know how she does that. She doesn't have the national cachet. She hasn't won anything. Um, you know, like, again, her last bid was a failed attempt. Uh, and, and many would argue she was cheated. And I'm one of those people. But again, I, I, don't, I don't see how she bridges that gap. Well, like you said, that's, that's an imp important point that you bring up, even if that's true. And that's why I said before, even if it's true that she lost, you don't you don't go you don't run for the governor of a southern a small southern state and say it's cheesy. So in for so my consolation prize is I get to be vice president, right? Right. <laughs> That's in essence her argument in so many words. And to your point, the black women who who are a very core constituency in the Democratic Party, those black women are going to vote for Joe Biden. Picking Stacey Abrams is not going to help Joe Biden, and, and dare I say, any any presidential candidate is in running, especially running against Trump. Stacey Abrams is not going to help Joe Biden pick up additional black vote, black female votes among the Democratic electorate. Uh, so again, so th there's nothing there's nothing for Joe Biden to gain by picking her as the vice presidential candidate. As a matter of fact by picking her, he might ostracize some people who were on the fence in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Georgia who might vote for him that might be turned off because in those states, Stacey Abrams is very much so well known. Let me ask you this, outside of the VP pick, would you have a problem with her appointing her, appoint, would you have a problem with him appointing her to some position in his cabinet? No, not at all. I, as a matter, I think that's the, I think that's the best decision if he's going to include her. I don't know enough about, I mean, I know she's an attorney. I know she was a, obviously a state representative in Georgia. I don't know enough about her subject matter expertise or her background in the, and the work that she covered in the state of Georgia to say what cabinet she might do better in, you know, compared, comparing one to the other. But, but no, I don't think that, I think that would be a, a great pick. Yeah, I, I, well, you know, her, her thing that everyone touts her for, ironically enough, is voter protections. And all, you know, and again, that, that wasn't enough to help her win in her state. There was a huge conflict of interest. Uh, the guy, the, the gentleman she lost to, Jack Kemp, I think was the Secretary of State or? He was. Yeah, he was. And he was over the elections. 
and he refused to recuse himself. So, you know, and there, there were tons of, of votes that were purged in the state. Um, so again, we, we, we get all that. But again, she is supposed to be this voter protections guru. Perhaps there's something she can do in his administration to help him there. Certainly she would, you know, that sounds like she would be an ideal candidate for undersecretary and the Department of Interior to work to, to manage, you know, the, a, a campaign under uh, a President Biden candidacy to roll out uh, or have a na nationwide campaign for mail voting or just modernizing voting, making yeah, sure we have a standard system of voting machines across all 50 states. Certainly that certainly, and she might, she might really enjoy that. She might really enjoy being in that position. But again, just the VP slot, I, I, don't, I don't see anything in her resume that would, that would make me, that would make her choice as VP palatable. Especially over the, over the other options that are there. Correct. I don't, I don't see how you pick her over Kamala Harris, per se. I don't see how you pick her over Elizabeth Warren. Those Val two Demings. people in particular. Val Demings is a, bit, is, a, is a much better choice than a Stacey Abrams. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But again, I think, I think Kamala Harris and both um, Elizabeth Warren both help bridge that enthusiasm gap in different ways, but they both do it to some degree or another. So I, I'd be comfortable with either one of those picks. Yeah, I had an interesting conversation earlier this week with someone who actually knows Kamala Harris, is a soror of hers, and she, she seems to think that there's too much misogyny out there to elect a female in a VP slot. And I don't know that that I don't know that I agree with her. I don't. I think I think that enough damage has been done by Trump and Pence at this point, especially even before you get to coronavirus. But especially now that we have coronavirus, I mean, we have officially crossed the Rubicon. We've we officially have more deaths within less than 90 days from coronavirus than we had pe soldiers who were killed in Vietnam. And Trump is still refusing to accept any culpability. So I think that's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Biden is already beating him in Florida, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Those are three key states. He only needs one of them to cross the 270 electoral vote threshold. Uh, again, I, I think it's, unless something really, really unforeseen happens between now and November, I think it's all but a lock for Biden to win the president. Sure. Well, I think that's it, Dave. We want to keep it short and sweet. Uh, just again, just to stay engaged. And uh, I love these conversations. It's hard.